Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm going to be starting a tiny little mini series dedicated towards information that I've picked up from other people that I thought were really interesting that have helped make an impact in our garden that I thought would also interest you. You guys always ask me, Luke, where do you learn all of your stuff? Is it all self-taught? Did you go to school for it? And the answer is yes, yes, and yes to a lot. Of, I've picked up information from so many different places. I always say, if you're not like a sponge, you know, you're not going to pick up information like other people do. You know, you look at people and you're like, how do they know what they know? It's because they have, you know, they have a student mentality. You know, I love learning things. I love listening to people that have done things, that are doing things, and are, are doing things better than me because they obviously are doing something right. And sometimes the information they give you is not always truthful. Sometimes it's not always the reason why they're having success. You know, they might say, oh, I bury a fish under my corn and that's why I have such good success. Well, it could be. It could be something else entirely though too. Not what I'm talking about today. Just an example though. But in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you a secret that I got from an old farmer that he that I had to swear I would not tell anyone in order for him to tell me. And so uh, I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, I, I promised him I wouldn't tell anyone, but um, I thought it was just at least interesting. And I've only used it a couple times. And so it's not something that I really... Um, you know, it's not something that I really personally think is uh, like a secret. I don't think it's necessarily something that him exclusively was doing, but um, he was super secretive about it. And that's what I think is just so funny about some of the older generation. Um, I love him to bits. You know, my grandpa, he's an old time farmer as well from, from way back. And uh, he just has a passion to grow a garden. He just loves, you know, loves doing things and he'll share secrets and different things he's done. But uh, some people are super secretive about their secrets. And I think it's so interesting because they'll, you know, they'll hoard them like a secret fishing spot. You know, if, if everyone else has gardening su success, well then, doggone it, you know, I, I have no claim to fame. <laughs> it's, just it's just a really backwards mentality. I just, I've never quite wrapped my head around. But they're interesting people to speak to and they have years of experience. And this old gentleman that I was speaking with, um, he was an old farmer uh, uh, that was about three, uh, four towns over from here and uh, and he was actually sitting in a diner my grandma and I before she passed away we'd always go anytime I visited her we go to this diner and she struck up a conversation with uh, with this guy we went out and toured his farm I still don't even remember what this guy's name was um, she knew him because they small town they all know everyone um, and so uh, so we, we went out and toured his little farm and uh, I think it was maybe about an acre or so it was a beautiful farm it's absolutely beautiful pristine perfect rows and uh, just stunning. I mean, just a, a beautiful garden nonetheless. But, uh, but we went out and toured and, and he said, he, he pulled me in close, pulled me in close, like right by the, right by the, the, uh, the shoulder sleeve or the, the arm sleeve of my shirt. He pulled me close and he grabbed onto it. Like, you know, kind of no personal boundaries type. That generation just didn't really have personal boundary space, but he, I didn't even know the guy either, which was kind of strange, but he pulled me, he pulled me up like this, grabbed my shirt. And he pulled me close. He goes, he goes, you want to hear the secret why I get so many tomatoes? And of course I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. He, and he goes, you have to promise me you're not going to tell anyone. I said, yeah, okay. He goes, you swear? I said, well, I don't really swear. He goes, you swear? I said, I, I swear. Sure. I just agreed. Um, <laughs> and so this guy was, this guy was a rough, tough, but like teddy bear farmer type guy. And he told me that his secret was to put uh, wood ash from his wood burning stove under his tomato plants a whole cup of wood ash under each and every tomato plant. And I thought to myself, wow, that is really interesting. It's so counterintuitive to anything anyone has ever told me because you know, tomatoes, they like acidic soil, don't they? I thought they did. You know, how his tomatoes were just bound, they, they were just bountiful and they were just absolutely the most productive tomatoes I'd ever seen. They were only about three feet tall. He was not using a single staking method like this. He was just kind of, uh, Florida weaving them and just letting them kind of sprawl. They were they were determinant style tomatoes. And later when I come to find out, um, there's actually a lot of uh, truth to what he was telling me. Um, now, is it a secret? Not necessarily. It's just a really good source of two things that determinant tomatoes utilize to put on a ton of fruit and make really hefty fruit at that. Indeterminate tomatoes would actually probably suffer from this from this trick, but because it's an old farmer, you know they don't really grow a lot of indeterminates. They're based on you know production. They just want to grow a super standard variety that's going to get them tomatoes to can and to process and to sell at their market. And so um, so a lot of them you know they grow determinates. This trick helps determinate tomatoes almost 40 percent or uh, increase their production by almost 40 percent. Now this trick is by applying wood ash 
which has two things. It's very alkaline, and it's also very rich in potash. Alkalinity and potash are two things that are very, very strange to associate with a tomato. But indeterminate tomatoes, you know, they're growing all season long. That alkalinity can actually cause some stress on them. But when it comes to a determinate tomato, the alkalinity actually helps to balance the pH. And balanced pH actually helps increase fruit production. In a study done, done by Duke University and Cornell University, they found that, uh, that both, of these, well, both of these universities found there to be an increase in production by almost 30%, upwards of 40% when applying an alkaline, uh, you know, an alkaline material such as wood ash to the base of plants. Um, they found that growing, soil, or growing tomatoes in a very acidic soil helped to promote a lot of foliage growth, but not as much fruit production. So for long-term production, um, you know, they stated that it would probably do more damage than good on an indeterminate, but when it came to a determinate that gave all of its fruit and ripened all of its fruit at once, the season is very short for determinants, and therefore giving them a boost of alkalinity helps to focus less on leaf production and more on fruit production, which I thought to be absolutely incredible that you know before all of this stuff had came out, they were just trying to utilize their wood ash. They were just taking stuff from their, their wood their wood burning stove, saying, what do we do with this? They were throwing it on their garden. And through trial and error, they found that you know applying that wood ash to their garden just helped increase this growth, just maximize growth. And that's because potash is an incredible source, uh, or uh, wood ash is an incredible source of potash as well. Potash is something that's, it's potassium. And potassium helps with plant vigor, it helps with plant health, and it also helps with fruit production. They found it as well in potatoes. Now potatoes, you need the acidic soil because otherwise they'll form scab. But they found that in the presence of potash, not necessarily wood ash, but potash, um, which is potassium, um, they found that there was a 30% increase in potato production as well. So there is a direct correlation to potash, which is potassium, don't forget that. I'm not talking about ash, it's called potash. Um, potash is potassium. There is a direct correlation between potassium and fruit production. Absolutely mind-blowing. And I think it's just so awesome to see this 80-year-old farmer, I don't even know if he's still alive at, or at this point or not. He was pretty old when I first saw him, and I saw him back when I was just starting gardening when I was like 14, 15 years old. And, uh, and he just, he swore by it. He said, he said, this is the only thing I do every single year besides uh, apply a basic 10, 10, 10 fertilizer. He said, I use just a cup of wood ash underneath every single plant. When I dig my hole, I put a cup of wood ash down. I put a little bit of soil on top so the roots don't come in contact with it because that would hurt the roots. And it was amazing because he'd learned this even though no one told him that. It just was, just was from trial and error. I thought that was so incredible. And the fact that there is actual uh, hard evidence to prove it is pretty amazing as well. So I actually, on this tomato plant right here, this is a, uh, this is a Rutgers tomato. This is a determinate tomato. It's been since taken over by, <laughs> by, this, uh, by this absolutely insane um, Tess's land race current. But we used wood ash on this determinate tomato. And you guys all said, what on earth have you been doing to that tomato? There were so many tomatoes on it. And I have pictures. There was probably 60, 70 tomato plant, tomatoes on this plant. This thing is just productive. It's still producing. And they're just starting to ripen up right now. It is a determinant, but um, some of the tomatoes were ripening up just a little bit later. But this plant, we used wood ash in the beginning of the year. We got them from our fire pit. I'll show you what we, what we pulled from. Just super easy to do. Su I mean, anyone can do this. It's just unbelievably easy to create some wood ash. Just burn some good hard wood, get some wood ash from that, and then uh, put a cup of it underneath your tomato plants. And the results, honestly, I mean, I, I don't think it's any secret with all the evidence that's been put out there, but it does seem to me that he was definitely onto something. So that's why I really wanna share it with you. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know why I didn't ever talk about it sooner, but uh, you know, it's something that we've done. And, and I don't know, I just, I didn't, really, I didn't really care to share a secret that I swore I wouldn't tell. But the more I thought about it and the more I just kind of, I'd seen the results from this, I thought, you know, it's not really fair to the gardening community to hold these secrets. You know, I, I just, I'm not a secret holder. Um, so, I mean, when it comes to certain things, I can hold a secret. But obviously, when it comes to someone growing more food that might make a difference in their family, um, I just don't think that's t something that's really worth you know hoarding. I don't think because when you you know when you die, that information it goes nowhere. You know you can't tell a secret once you're dead. And so um, if it really was a secret, I want to let that secret be known that it really does actually help fruit production immensely. So also the other thing to note is um, it's, it is highly recommended to do a soil test prior because if you apply too much wood ash, what can happen is wood ash is very, very alkaline. 
and it can cause the, the uh, pH of your soil to go super far on the pH scale. So right now, our pH is uh, right around a six to a seven. Six to a seven is perfectly ideal for growing tomatoes. Anything like a 4.5 to a five is just too acidic. It's gonna increase, you know, the plant's gonna look great. It's gonna produce a ton of foliage, but it's not gonna produce, produce a whole lot of, uh, of fruit. Whereas if you get too far on the alkaline scale, like in a seven to an eight, or a seven's fine, but like an eight to a nine, I should say, it's just far too alkaline. And so it's very, very important that you don't use too much wood ash. A little bit goes a very, very long way with wood ash because of how powerful it is and how potent it is. But your plants are gonna see huge results and, uh, and it's free. I mean, it all it just comes from literally just burning wood. So this is just what I used in the beginning of the season. I use just this rough wood ash here. Uh, it's just burnt down stuff from fires of the past. I just throw this in and it's just got a great combination of, you know, biochar, which has been shown to be wonderful for the soil. This is very porous and helps to absorb nutrients and hold on to water. But also it's got this just beautiful, actual broken down ash, which is wonderful as well. So it's got awesome mineral content in this. Um, plus obviously the potash, which is the most important component to the, uh, to the wood ash. And one final word of caution before using wood ash in your garden is obviously make sure you're not using anything that has any chemicals in it. If you're burning treated wood that would have had like creosote in it, or if you're burning OSB board, or if you're burning, which has like glue in it, if you're burning anything that uh, was using lighter fluid like to start the fire, or hopefully not gasoline, don't use gasoline in fire. They do not mix whatsoever. Very, very dangerous and extremely dumb to use gasoline uh, to start a fire. But um, you know, any petrochemicals whatsoever, if you've burnt trash, I know a lot of people in the country will sometimes just burn their trash, um, anything like that, do not use that wood ash. I use it from strictly hard wood that we get from a tree trimming company, totally fine to use, and uh, that way it's just pure wood ash in your, uh, in your garden. There won't be any ill effects to you or your soil. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I, that's really all I got for you today. I just thought it was a really fun story to tell you guys because it's something that I've carried with me since quite literally I was 14, 15 years old. And uh, you know, being 25 now, it's something that uh, more than half of my life I've been carrying this story with me. And it's just, it's really interesting. It's so fun to, to be able to pick up these stories and these little tricks and tips that people have told you throughout the years and share them with all of you guys, especially if they have some merit. And maybe there might be some ones coming up that don't really have any merit at all. We'll see. I've got a lot of different stories and I think it'd be kind of a little fun little mini series. Um, so, and plus I've got a lot of memories of going out to, uh, to Brown City, Michigan, uh, which is where I, that's where I met the old farmer and that's where my family grew up and uh, just a super small farming community. And I uh, met a lot of Amish people, which I've got stories from. I met a lot of old farmers, a couple more from the same farmer that uh, I still don't even know his name, but uh, you know, still a lot of cool stories to share. So maybe I'll share some of them uh, in the coming weeks. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya, bye.